Arizona, where astronomy happens. And welcome to the Stewart Observatory Perspective Visit. Welcome to Astronomy Row. On my left, we have the venerable Stewart Observatory, the department that we're going to be touring a little later. And of course, on my right, a tour wouldn't be complete without showing off the National Science Foundation's National Optical and Infrared Laboratories, formerly known as NOAO. But that isn't all. If we continue down Cherry Avenue, we're eventually going to see the Kuiper Building, where we have the Lunar and Planetary Laboratories, which host some of the fantastic missions within our own solar system, including the recent OSIRIS-REx. Further down, you'll see the football stadium, the football stadium hosts the Mirror Lab, where under the football stadium, they construct some of the largest optical mirrors in the world for use in telescopes around the globe. Associated with the Lunar and Planetary Laboratories, or LPL, is the Flandreau Science Center and Planetarium, where they not only have science-based shows, but more fun and eclectic types of light shows, including one last year that was Stranger Things themed. Now, if we continue further south, we're gonna see one of the last buildings that we're gonna be focusing on in our tour, which is the optics department. Now, Steward gets a lot of students from the optics department who partner and work with professors uh, to build instruments for telescopes that are owned by the University of Arizona and around the globe. We're now standing on the University of Arizona Mall, which stretches from east to west and usually hosts events for the entire university, such as a yearly book festival and weekly farmers markets, as well as other events. The university is also an incredibly bike friendly zone and most students get around using a bike or on foot between the different buildings and to the student union, which we'll visit next. The University of Arizona is in the Sonoran Desert, which means that we're surrounded by wonderful cacti, especially the saguaro, which is native to the region. The weather is absolutely gorgeous here, and we usually enjoy upwards of 300 days of sunlight each year. Now, that usually means that in the summer, it's way too hot, whereas the rest of the year, we enjoy wonderful temperatures. Right now, it's the end of February, and it's around 70 degrees Fahrenheit when I stand in the sun. Welcome to the Student Union. At the Student Union, grad students can find such amenities such as the bookstore, a notary, ATMs, and of course, food. Many grad students do bring their own lunches from home, but once in a while, even I get peckish and visit here. After your time at the Student Union, you can walk back west towards Stewart Observatory. Now, we can see the historical dome in the background, and here in the dome, we have graduate student offices and the, an old telescope, which is still used for undergraduate projects and for public observing nights. Steward graduate students take the opportunity to get outside whenever they can. And so we usually come out here to the lawn to eat, hang out, and even some classes spend their times outside. This is the old historical entrance to Steward Observatory, which is now surrounded by orange trees and also boarded up. These oranges are absolutely great and ready to eat. <laughs> Welcome to the Steward Observatory Courtyard, where we mingle outside of N210 following colloquium, where we generally have snacks and other confectionaries. And as well, you can see the dome behind us, with the only entrance to this building now on this side. We'll be going inside there in just a second to show you graduate student offices and the telescope. Welcome to the second floor of the dome. Here's where we host the graduate student offices. Unfortunately, we can't get in here right now to show you what they look like, but 
they're generally considered very nice as they have windows, though they can get quite hot in the summer. We're going to continue up the stairs to show you the Stewart Observatory Telescope. We are now inside the Stewart Observatory, the original building which founded the department. Although this is not the original telescope, this is the 21-inch Raymond E. White Jr. reflector. This telescope is used for undergraduate research projects, public observing nights, and also for enthusiasts within the department. Over here behind Steward, we have the Steward Observatory Trailer, which are a space of pseudo-temporary offices that graduate students and faculty inhabit. Behind the Steward Observatory Trailer, we have the bike cage, where graduate students who bike into work can feel more secure by locking up their bikes inside a coded gate. Right next to the bike cage, we have the business office, which handles all the financial aspects of Steward. So when you're coming and you're being hired, your official paperwork will be processed by this office behind us. Welcome to room N210. This is the largest classroom at Steward. And although you won't have any classes here, as graduate classes are usually smaller, it's usually where we host the colloquium speaker and other large events. And the room was recently refurbished and modeled, so now there's even extra legroom. Move over, economy. You're flying business. You're now standing in the steward atrium, where we have just entered from the outside, and we're standing at the crossroads of the entire department. To our right, we can try and guess the value of the Hubble constant based on when this poster was made, given how it thinks that the universe is only 15 years old. To our left, more importantly, we have the administrative offices in the new half of the building. Notice how I've walked down the stairs. In the administrative office, Michelle and Hector can help you with whatever you need, from filling out forms to understanding what requirements you need for your degree, or if you get locked out of your office. Come on in to the Apai offices. Here, students, up to six or five students, study exoplanets in these immaculate offices. Now, if we come along here, we can see that the nicer offices are, of course, reserved for the faculty members and postdocs, but grad students are still able to find their own spaces here in these cubicles. Welcome to the Stewart Observatory Grad Cave, where graduate students can take one of these seven cubicles, six cubicles, in order to get their work done. Now, if you do get locked out of these, you can climb over, which I have done quite a few times, but preferably, you want to keep your key on you. We're now firmly situated inside the old half of Stewart Observatory. On our right, you're going to find a variety of classrooms, which unfortunately we can't show you the inside of, but it's where you'll be taking the majority of your graduate classwork. We also have a computer lab, but unfortunately, again, it's closed for now. Professor offices also line the left side of these walls. And as we get further down to the back, we'll find a graduate student office. Come on. This is another graduate student office where we can find such amenities as a window, a couch, and of course, plenty of friends to sit with. Welcome to the infrared wing of Stewart Observatory. Have you ever wondered who built the instrument on the Spitzer Space Telescope and for the upcoming James Webb Space Telescope? Well, that work was done right here in Arizona. This wing specializes in building instruments for these space telescopes in order to do extragalactic science, galactic science, and nowadays exoplanet research as well. Come on, let's go show you around. Oh, you caught me in my office. Welcome to the JWST grad student office. Unfortunately, this room is undergoing minor renovations right now, so it doesn't look as good as it normally does. But I still managed to find some beauty in it. In this room, the JWST group at the University of Arizona will monitor NIRCAM's progress as the observatory travels to its final location at L2. Welcome to another graduate student office on the second floor of Stewart. As you can see here, we have multiple cubicles for different grad students to come and have an office. Over here, you'll probably see the most developed of these cubicles belonging to one of our radio astronomers. One endeavor that the University of Arizona is involved with is the Event Horizon Telescope, 
As, as you can see here, the Event Horizon Telescope took the first image of a black hole ever. Welcome to one of Professor Dan Maroney's laboratories. Here, telescope instruments, electronics, and components are developed, tested, and ultimately shipped to telescopes either in Arizona or around the world. Welcome to one of the Arizona Radio Observatory Laboratories. Here, instrumentation and equipment is developed to fly on balloon experiments to space. For example, this has been to space. This cryostat has been to space. Many of what, much of what you see here might go to space. I might go to space. If you're more interested in doing optical science, this is Professor Chad Bender's laboratory, where he works on optical spectrometers and fiber optic instruments to be deployed on telescopes in Arizona. One of his recent works, NUID, is a spectrometer used to find exoplanets around stars. Welcome to the Stewart Observatory officially sanctioned interaction area. In here, we also have microwaves for heating your food, a coffee machine named Maggie, which is, has exclusive use by graduate students for only 50 cents a, cop a coffee, and a sink in order to wash your dishes. There also are tables and chairs at which to sit at in between events and to relax and socialize with grad students. One of the best parts is the bird cage, aptly named because it is covered with a sort of fence that keeps birds out and graduate students in. Right next to the interaction area, we have two of some of the most important rooms at Stewart Observatory. The N305 conference room, where we have uh, speakers and general meetings within the department. Unfortunately, we can't show you as it's locked. But we also have access to the Parker Library, the Stewart Observatory Library. In here, we have science coffees on every other morning. And we also have tutoring sessions with undergrads and generally is a good place to study and work during your first few years. Although N305, the main conference room that faculty and graduate students use at Stewart was closed, this is a conference room of a little smaller size that you can get a feel as to what it might be like to sit in the room. Here, I'll show you. Welcome to the fifth floor lounge area. Here we have vending machines, a nicer kitchen, as well as the entire operations for the large binocular telescope. Here we find ourselves in one of the graduate student offices on the fifth floor. As you can see, graduate students have cubicles with their own space to accessorize, keep their various computer equipment, and also put up some fun posters. We hope you enjoyed your tour of Stewart Observatory. Although many of the rooms here are locked, and it's no stand-in for coming in in person, we really hope that we could give you a sense as to what it might be like to be a graduate student here at the University of Arizona. Come on, I'll walk you out. Stewart Observatory is a home to fantastic research at the University of Arizona. And it's home to many fantastic graduate students who engage in that astronomical research as well. Whether you're interested in planets around other stars, galaxies far, far away, or things near to home, Arizona might be the right place for you. So, once again, thank you for coming on this journey with me, and we hope to see you here in the fall. Thank you.